Hello guys and welcome to another video on Top Topics channel. Today we will talk about 5 basic rules for what to do if a tsunami is approaching you. So let's get to it. Most countries where is a possibility of tsunami threat have a sophisticated warning system. So if you are in a tourist area, it is quite likely that you will be warned by the sound of sirens or amplifiers that are located on a buildings from which the announcer will warn you of the danger of an incoming tsunami. If you are in a low coastal area, your evacuation route. You should follow evacuation route. Move to higher ground. If such a system doesn't exist in the area, then follow the warning signals that alert you of tsunami arrival. We made a video on this topic before, you can find the link in the caption of this video. So, if this situation happens and you find yourself facing incoming tsunami, what should you do? The first and most important piece of advice is to definitely avoid going to explore exposed seabed. Many people made this mistake during the 2004 tsunami in the Indian Ocean and fell into a death trap. Before the arrival of up to 50% of the tsunami, the water recedes, sometimes beyond the visible horizon. It is definitely tempting to walk on the exposed seabed to collect sea treasures. But keep in mind that after the seabed is exposed, you have a maximum of 5 to 7 minutes before the wave appears. Then it's usually too late to escape. Likewise, don't try to stand ashore and document the event on your cell phone. Although a tsunami may seem harmless to you from the shore, remember that what you see is just the beginning of the whole event and behind the head of the first wave a rising ocean is rolling, even at a height of several tens of meters. Many people realize too late that they underestimated the phenomenon that was so innocently approaching. So what to do? First of all, keep calm and try to think rationally about how to get to safety as soon as possible. In countries like Japan, every coastal town or village has an evacuation point where ubiquitous arrows will point you. These are either tall reinforced concrete buildings or artificial structures that will protect you from most waves. During the earthquake in 2011, some evacuation buildings were flooded because the wave was up to 40 meters high. If you are in a country where there are no similar evacuation points, try to get to any elevated place as a priority, which is also as far from the shore as possible. The direct proportion is that the further and higher you are from the sea, the safer you are. If you don't have time to run and the wave is approaching, run to the tallest building in the area, to the top floor. If you come across a closed door, open it by force. Remember that property damage is minor at the moment. It's your life on the line. If there is no building nearby, at least try to climb the nearest tree. Even this seemingly desperate last option saved many lives in 2004. Please be sure not to leave the evacuation area immediately after the wave has fallen. A tsunami is usually a series of several consecutive waves and often the other waves are much larger than the first one. Leave the place after at least three hours have passed since the last wave.
So these are the main tips on what to do during a tsunami. If you are traveling to high risk countries, don't be afraid to ask a hotel staff or local authorities what are the evacuation plans in the event of tsunami. This one piece of information can be really helpful. Remember that a tsunami has incredible destructive potential and never underestimate this dangerous natural phenomenon. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, please give us a like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. It gives us a fuel to make new videos. So thank you very much and stay tuned. Bye.